Listen, the content gods have spoken and they have linked up the very opposite Candace Owens and Amber Rose. Candace Owens, conservative darling, has been on a conquest of defeating the left for years now, ever since her times that I became sort of somewhat familiar with her over time at PragerU. Within her content, she has many times talked a bunch of shit. <laughs> about Amber Rose. And I would say, you look at my content, I would say rightfully so. Now, why is it that I say that some of the things that I think about when I think of Amber Rose is pure soul, soul to devil of Holly weird, just satanic decision-making, tattoo across, had shaved all her hair off. She was a beautiful young girl with all of her hair and she shaved all her hair off. Industry thought moving from the Kanye's to the 21 Savages, who I believe that she turned out by the way, and all the way down to Wiz Khalifa, who I think that she had a baby with. Candace Owens and Amber Rose sat down for a conversation. So what I wanna do right now is I want to get active on this particular conversation because apparently Amber Rose recently spoke out at the RNC. I didn't realize this. I didn't watch the Republic National Convention, but she had some speaking time. She faced a lot of criticism because of her hoe past, her slut walk past. So is she really a conservative? Is she grifting? I don't know. We're going to find out a lot within this conversation because as of recent, when I've done content on Candace Owens, I like the way that she can address hoes like to their face. It's almost like it's with an ease. It's with a an understanding of your wholeness, but I want you to do better. So I thought that it's a good way to allow women who think like that to accept a different way of thinking. So I think that we need to get active. With that being said, let go. Amber Rose, I am so excited to have you here. Thanks for joining. Thank you, thanks for having me. So many things that I wanna say, I'm gonna try to shut up. But the first <laughs> thing that I wanna say is, I was so empathetic watching you at the RNC because first and foremost, your speech was amazing. Yeah. And I think everybody agreed that your speech was amazing. But I knew what was gonna follow immediately after, which was sort of this purity test because I had lived it before. So I was in your shoes, I guess now it's been like eight, nine years ago, and I just, realized that everything I was being told was a lie. Like I, and it was specifically started on the BLM stuff, like mm -hmm. on the black America stuff. And that's yeah. all I said. And then my remarks went viral. I was being invited to all these places and I wasn't ready to then have my feet held to the fire about every single position. Well, what is she, what has she ever said about right. pro-life? What has she ever said about this? What, like, is she actually a conservative? I'm like, guys, I'm just saying what I believe in my heart to be true. And now you're trying to put me through a test, right. and that's exactly what happened to you thereafter. Yeah. So I guess the first question I just wanna ask you is, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful. You're good. Yeah, this isn't the first time I've been canceled or viral or trending on Twitter, right. you know? I've been down this road several times throughout the years, so it's kind of just like, I, I mean, I slept like a baby this whole week, so. <laughs> I'm okay. so glad to hear that. So yeah. how are you feeling, I guess, leading up to the speech? Because that's the that's a huge honor mm -hmm. to be My speaking in front of the former president and likely future president of the United States. Right. How are you feeling leading up to the speech and immediately following it? So I, um, I wrote my speech with one of the writers that works for Trump, right? I told them everything that I wanted to talk about. I didn't want to talk about the border. I didn't want to talk about all that stuff. I wanted okay. to just keep it like, you know, I'm a mom. I want to talk about the economy, inflation, things like that. My story, how I came over to this side. And um, <clears throat> they wrote something up and then I kind of put it into my own words and that's what everyone saw okay. at the RNC. But I, I will say, Candace, I did not think anyone would care. I'll be honest with you. I just, you know, I was just like, there's so many speakers going up. No one knows me in the political world. You know, I'm gonna go there. And honestly, the whole day before I spoke, maybe there was like some young girls that were like my fans and stuff that wanted pictures. But other than that, no one, you know, really knew who I was there. And right after that speech, boy, I, I must have taken like 3,000 pictures in four days. Wow. 
I promise you, it was like from the morning into the night, downstairs in the hotel, outside at the RNC, walking to the RNC, because you know, they had everything blocked off and stuff. Um, It definitely changed my life, but I don't know, for sometimes for me, I'm like, I'm just a girl from Philly. Why does anyone care? What? You know, and then I go online and everyone's like, she's irrelevant. No one cares about what she has to say. No one gives a you know? And then I'm like, okay, no one gives a Let me just go on stage and just say how I feel. And then people give a And I'm like, but I thought they weren't going to give a Yeah. So that's what I battle with every time I do something like that. Well, I knew it was going to be huge for a couple of reasons. The first, and I saw this happening as soon as you put on the MAGA hat and there was a clip of you, TMZ, was basically chasing you, trying to pigeonhole you of like, wait, you're you belong to us. Like you're right. you're on the left. You're the girl from the slut walk. Right. And I know how proprietary Hollywood gets about if you're in Hollywood, if we've ever promoted you, if we've ever put you on a magazine cover, you get in line with these beliefs. Like you these are your political beliefs and you can't change. So I knew hitting the RNC stage, which is such a right. pendulum swing they were not gonna have that. And then I knew that conservatives, I just don't think that they have thought through the differences, not all conservatives, have thought through the differences between what it means to be a conservative, what it means to be a Republican, and what it means to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. And they were holding you to a test of, is she a Republican conservative Christian? And the reality is tons of people can and do vote Republican who are not Christians, who are not even necessarily fully conservatives. They're like gay married men. Mm -hmm. And they vote because they prioritize the economy over their gay identity. I also don't think Donald Trump is very conservative. Interesting. In in what ways? Um, He's pro-choice. I don't think that's very conservative. It's definitely not Christian. So people can say you're fiscally yeah. conservative and this kind of gets into it. Like there needs to be a thorough conversation about what it means to be a Republican versus a conservative versus a Christian. And we haven't had that. And I knew that your feet were gonna be held to the fire. Was there any comments that, before we get into like your background and how you ended up there, sure. that impacted you or that you felt upset about that came at you? Or were you just like, I'm good? Before she gets into the comments, um, first thing that I notice is that she has this black hat on, and I wonder if she's doing that in order to hide the uh, forehead tattoo. Second thing is, is that the only reason why anybody cares what she says ever, because think about it. How did she become popular? How did she become known? Because she was fucking with a famous dude. She was fucking with Kanye West. No one knew about her. No one gave a shit. They broke up. And then she really dived down deep into her debauchery and up into including leading a slut walk. Some of the images that came out the slut walk from like five, six, seven, eight years ago were absolutely ridiculous. It just, a lot of it too, just became like this LGBTQ debauchery fest as well. But with that being said, I wanted to take a look real quick at her speech. Hold on, let me bring this up. At the RNC. Can I? Boom, let's bring this up. Let's watch. Entire family is racially diverse. And I believe the left-wing propaganda that Donald Trump was a racist. My father said, no, he's not, Amber. What are you talking about? And when I insisted, he said, prove it. So to prove my father wrong, I did my research and looked into all things Donald Trump. People have to do their research. I watched all the rallies. And I started meeting so many of you, his red hat wearing supporters. <laughs> what was the research? I realized Donald Trump and his supporters don't care if you're black, white, gay, or straight. It's all love. <laughs> and that's when it hit me. These are my people. This is where I belong. (laughs) So I let go of my fear of judgment, of being misunderstood, of getting attacked by the left, and I put the red hat on too. Thank you. This is... Love you too. 
I never felt more free and more love for my country than I do now. I want to thank my father, who's in the audience tonight, for opening my eyes. He served over 20 years in the U.S. military. Thank you for your service, Dad. I love you, Dad. I love you. I love you so much. Thank you. When I met the President and Melania for the first time, he was kind and generous and funny as hell. Very funny. The First Lady was gracious and smart with a smile that will brighten up any room. If you're watching this tonight, you know our country is in trouble. Just like me. When you go to the store and buy food for your family, you're shocked. When you fill up your gas tank, you're pissed. I know I am. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. The words that she said, like, how the fuck? <laughs> like, there was nothing moving. There was nothing monumental. And I'm not just getting on her because I know about her past and I know like she led a, a, a society of, of feminist, sexually liberated women to their downfall. But like, this is some really elementary, it sounded like I wrote this shit when I was nine. And I said, here, Amber, can you please read this in front of everybody? This shit is complete ass and trash. Here's the thing though, and I will say this, everybody can evolve. Everybody can change. What I'm trying to understand is, has she really evolved and has she really changed? Or is she at a point in her career where she's like, well, I'm in my 40s now. My ass is not what it used to look like. So I can't make the highly weird money as much as what I used to. How about I just hop on the conservative bandwagon? Now this is my new bag. And when you turn on the news, you are just exhausted. Inflation is out of control. And you know in your heart, it was not like this under Donald Trump. My message to you tonight comes from a humble place. The left told me to hate Trump, and even worse, to hate the other side, the people who support him. I don't believe When you, you cut through the lies, people. you realize the truth. American families were better when Donald Trump was president. We were safer, wealthier, and stronger. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote to put money back in our pockets and good food on our kids' plates. Yes. <laughs> or, as Trump would say, it's a vote to make America great again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Here's the thing, um, for conservatives, for Republicans, this is absolutely a win. To demonstrate a forehead tattoo wearing uh, <laughs> lovely young lady uh, who was devout feminist for years, and that's what she popularized her career on after the whole Kanye West shit. To have her switch sides absolutely is fantastic visualization for what they are fighting for. But, you know, do I believe it? Nah. Shout out to Ivan Jr. with the $20 super chat. So we're supposed to shame people for their past criticize them to oblivion some of y'all are hard to please she gave an average speech on purpose as to relate to the average person no she was given the words for the speech they actually wrote it for her but i agree with you to give a speech to an average person, I can understand that. But here's the thing, and I've had to learn this lesson the hard way about a month or so ago. I cannot just believe someone just because they just tell me to believe them. <laughs> so with that being said, my liar detector is high as shit. I'm not sure if you're talking to me in this, Ivan, not sure, but my bullshit detector is high as shit. But what I just say before the super chat, people can change, people can evolve. She's a mother now, I think a multiple times over, right? But I would argue she sold her soul and we see this from these holly weird we see this from these women that's in media that don't have any goddamn talents they sell their soul for the bag but the bag will dry up because their bot their 
their looks begin to fade, their bodies fade, and then they start doing weird shit in order to get even more press, like a damn forehead tattoo. And that was years ago. So now, could it be a new grift? Now she's going conservative like F it? I don't know. Candace, I believe, is gonna ask her all of these damn questions, but I thought that that was important to be able to go over. Well, I'll be honest with you, the Matt Wall stuff, it didn't really bother me, but it did, it did, um, you know, people, of religious people like that is why I went on my atheist journey. And so I, I was a, I was a Christian my whole life. I used to go to church. My mom still goes to church seven days a week. You know, I used to go to church with my mom all the time. But I used, I, I used to run into people like him often. And so for me, okay. it made me just get turned off by the church. And then in turn, kind of go on a spiritual journey. I was looking into Buddhism. I was looking into Islam, which was she's finding extremely far-fetched for me. <laughs> yeah, that's and the then opposite. I, on, I just never felt comfortable on that side. But I, I will say besides that, um, when, I, when I showed up at the RNC, it was, there was a lot of white men in suits. Okay. And so... I can understand why a, maybe a person of color or somebody that comes from the left w would be intimidated by that because that's maybe not necessarily the norm that we're used to being around. But after I did that speech, Candace, I, I spoke to so many people or they were coming up to me telling me their stories, right? And these are, these are guys that look like they come from generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're like, oh no, I, I came from nothing. You know, I I just worked my way up and I figured it out. Or uh, one of the other guys was like, my dad's in prison for murder. I mean, you would think this guy was like, had a billionaire daddy. He was like, no, my dad's in prison for murder. Um, my sister died of fentanyl poisoning. You know, my brother died in the opioid crisis. And so it just, you know, I, I still had that remnants left of the of the left in my head where I, I have to admit, when I walked in there, I'm like, oh my God, they're gonna hate me, or they're just, they're from a different world. And when I started talking to them, I'm like, we're actually all going through the same thing in America right now. And you can't just judge a book by its cover, because I don't want people to judge me. I'm actually a sweetheart. I'm, I, I, I'm not a, a crazy person or anything like that. But yeah, it was, um, it was, it was really sad. A lot of people are going through a lot, and. Uh, and thank you, you know, for telling your stories, everyone at the RNC, and like, you know, um, and sorry for your loss, because people lost a lot of people to fentanyl mostly. So. And it, it's interesting that you say that, because one of the things I always say to my cousin, she, she does my hair, and we talk about this a lot. I'm like, if only people in the hood knew that the rednecks, them are the exact same people. Yeah, for They're sure. They're the exact same people. Yeah. And yet the media will have you thinking like, oh, the rednecks hate black people. Then yeah. I'm like, it is actually, as soon as you get around them, I'm like, they're exactly the same people flipped. And some of the best people I've ever met, actually, I will say the best people I ever met are just from down here in the South because they have the right values. Like, you know, they family and faith. And faith is a big component of it. And I know what you mean when you say that you feel and I, it makes me sad to hear that because I've heard it many times that Christians can be really judgmental mm -hmm. or if you felt that because the reality is that there were so many other Christians who were not saying that. And I messaged Matt immediately because I actually know Matt Walsh very well. I've worked with him for years. He's actually an amazing person. And I just felt that... You know, I was actually following him on Instagram. Were you? And I unfollowed him after I saw that tweet. Oh my, see, I I didn't like... know much about him, guys... other people following mm. him. So I was just trying to find a community of people and I, I just, I unfollowed him. I'm like, oh, I guess he doesn't like me, so. That, and, and that is so, uh, yeah. Uh, honestly, the tweet was ill representative of who Matt Walsh is, and his wife is amazing. He, I think what he was trying to say didn't come across the right way, because I immediately texted him, and I was just like, wait, Matt, I think that, like, you have, you have this wrong. And I think what he was trying to say, and I hope I don't, I don't sound like I'm, like, an apologist for Matt Walsh, but obviously, like, and I might be being a little Catholic gang gang here, but I think what he was trying to say was something about the RNC and like what they're prioritizing. But I actually even disagree with that point too, because I think that, again, speaking to like what the RNC should be trying to do ahead of an election is basically saying, are we, these are the things that we are offering, like a better economy, this, that, and but these are the lies that are told about the RNC. Like the people right. believe that Donald Trump okay. is this. Yeah. And I think a part of that is kind of trying to disillusion people. Mm -hmm. And so I wish you, you guys, and I hope you will, and the opportunity to have a moment to speak because I promise you, like, it's not who he is. He's like a really good dude. And I know, I'm good. You know, it's really, um, it's really nice to see Candace continue to speak well about uh, at least Matt Walsh, right? Uh, from back in her time in the Daily Wire. 
Uh, at the same time, though, I am curious what he said. So I just pulled this up for you guys. Uh, let's take a quick gander. Uh, the RNC. So this is what Matt Walsh said. And it looks like he. OK, so this was the um, the video of Amber Rose. So Matt Walsh says the RNC gives a primetime speaking slot to a <laughs> pro abortion feminist and self-proclaimed slat with a face tattoo whose only claim to fade is having sex with rappers. Oh, God damn. Hold up. God damn. Order. 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 <laughs> God damn it, Matt Walsh. If that's not a burn, then I don't know what is. Truly an embarrassment. Not a single voter will be mobilized by this person. Listen, the young brother, Matt Walsh, is entitled to his thoughts and opinions. Let me see. Tristan Tate said, I hear you, Matt, but she is also an American. An American who was followed and speaks to many other Americans who wouldn't listen to a man like you. This is very true. Absolutely, Amber Rose is going to, is going to hit some percentage of slut somewhere, right? Like, that, 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 Donald Trump must be trying to vie for the slut vote. There's a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? There's, I would say that there's more identified sluts in America than black people. <laughs> I, would, I would say that was like 13.5 million black people. I would say there's at least 50 million just slats. Slats. I would say at least. Bump, race, creed, color, or religion. If you are a slat, come and listen to Amber. What's her name? Rose. The slut vote matters. Slut lives matter. Matter of fact, I want to see the whole... Uh, I'm going to see... I don't think I'm too good to accept her vote. Uh, hate, hate to disagree, Matt. There's absolutely a, a voting base that can relate to Amber. Yeah, I actually, that's actually correct. There is a voting base that would relate to her. There's just certain people that she would reach that a Matt Walsh would never be on their radar. Let me go back for a quick second. Okay, all right. Uh, hold on, he responded. He says, some thoughts on this Amber Rose thing, since it's apparently extremely controversial to say that the Republicans shouldn't give a primetime talk primetime convention speaking slot to one of the founders of the slut walk first of all maybe Emma rose has totally changed it as some type of conversion experience there's no evidence of that i'd happen to agree with that only that she likes donald trump now there are many 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 examples of conservatives rallying around the new celebrity hero just because the person likes trump only to be humiliated and betrayed by that same person shortly thereafter this has happened countless times i've called it ahead of time in nearly every case and have been screamed at by conservatives the way you are screaming at me now hopefully this is the first time i'll be wrong about something like this but i highly doubt it listen at the end of the day he's being protective Right. Like, what are her real intentions? Although I can see how others might say that it's coming across as a bit of a hater because he's not speaking on the RNC stage. But they already have enough voters that look like Matt Walsh. Second, even if there has been some kind of conversion, that doesn't mean you take it somewhere. So you don't you don't take someone who has been a conservative for 42 seconds and turn them into the mouthpiece of a movement. I think this is legit criticism. Again, how many times do we need to learn this lesson? A person has been wrong about everything up until approximately yesterday and morning needs to be learning and listening not giving primetime speeches at political conventions third he's going in just to give you an idea of how new Ro rose's conversion is if there has been one at all it was just this past march that she praised the satanic temple for hate helping a lot of people by making sure they can get abortions just this past march wow that was march of this year she was she has not even pretended to disavow that point of view or any of her far left views apart from her dislike of Trump. If it is outrageous and offensive to suggest that a person such as this may not be fit for primetime Republican speaker, then conservative then conservatism as a movement is even worse shape than I thought. In conclusion, guys, what the hell? <laughs> then he he's. Po oh, I don't want to show that photo. Uh, hold on. Let me see. Don't give them primetime speaking at our convention. Hold on. Let me look at this photo elsewhere because, you know, Twitter is wild. Okay. She's apparently uh, tongue kissing what looks to be a homosexual male. Um, I can't show that, but you know what I can show? This is her Instagram for her goddamn slut walk. Uh, it has 53,000 followers. 
Um, which for her standards is not a lot. Um, there. Oh my. Yeah. This is. Yep. Okay. Wow. Yep. That sure is empowering. Wow. Uh, 2015. Let me see right here. 2015, 2016, 2017. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know about all of this. She has, she's now a reform. When are these posts from? Six days ago. Yeah. This is stuff that she's still doing now. What part of conservatism is this? This all, as I look at all of this, I just think about uh, uh, drugs that are being done. I think about liberal ass, woke ass shit. I think about uh, men competing in women's sports. Uh, I, I think about the feminization of young men today and the masculinization of young women today. I, I mean, I think about all these weird things. Uh, anyway, let me get this dumb shit off the screen um, and let's go back in. Oh, did I miss a super chat? See, no need for Matt explaining if you're a good dude. I really despise when Candace does this. If he really needed to walk back what he said, he would have done so. Be who you are. I respect you saying that because Candace is talking for him right here a little bit. I think that Candace is trying to see the goodness in the slut. While Matt is understandably cautious. Her slut walk IG is newly posted. It's, it's shit that's going on right now. She's doing the satanic shit. I mean, could you do all of those things and still vote for Donald Trump? I guess you could, but she's speaking as if she's all knowledgeable. I think it's a grift, but let's keep listening. Yeah, I know, I know, I feel it. I know, I get it. But I'm glad that so many other people like responded. Yeah, I had a lot of DMs of you know people saying that they're you know they're gonna pray for me. That like nice Christians. I promise he's a nice Christian. I promise he is. That I just it came out. I think it came out the wrong way. But yeah, Matt does so much charity for Christians, and he's fought on a lot of causes. And again, I don't want to like a Matt apologist, but I get it. I totally get how you feel about the situation. I just think it's more so like when he's like you know. the slut walk, fine. The f-ing rappers part, I, I you but that's know, true. what's so funny, Ken, is I, I've only been in relationships my whole career. And I've been- Amber, we only know you for fucking Kanye West. Excuse my French. We only know you from that. That's how you got popular. That's how people know you. That's, that's how you got a name for yourself. That's why all of these dudes nowadays, if they're in a relationship with you, they will make you sign a non-disclosure agreement. Or in fact, I know some of these YouTubers that if they start dating a girl and if they bring the girl on screen, they will sign a contract with that because they're making a career out of them. They're, they're, They're giving them a career. Now, due to social media, you can now have a career not having any talent whatsoever. That's legitimately the place that we're in nowadays. And listen, at the end of the day, if they provide some type of entertainment value by their likeness and their image, then so be it. I just think that to completely discredit her past, which is something I tell you guys not to do with women in relationships, you should always understand their past because it is going to give you now people can change, but it can give you a. Uh, an indication of how truthful that she is being with you in the future or is she doing it with you in order to you know try to get one up over on you you know it's actually crazy too she was so deep down into it um and shout out to 21 savage i actually um i actually bumped into him in atlanta (laughs) not too long ago at a gun range and it was it was kind of funny because i drove up and it was a lady that was in my passenger seat and and she was like looking forward and then she was like squinting her eyes and I'm like, and I see there was a very, I'm not going to say what type of car that he was in, but um, I was like, shit, that looked like 21 Savage. And I was trying to look for the weird ass tattoo that's like right in the middle right here, but I couldn't really see it. Anyway, so I go park my car. But the thing is when I was driving past him, he was like looking in my car. Like he was like looking at me in the eye. It was odd. And I looked, I looked at my, uh. My passenger, I was like, but it looked like he was like staring at me. And she was like, I don't know, right? <laughs> so I go park the car. I'm going to bring up this damn, uh, hold on. I'm going to bring this up on the screen while I, while I talk about it. Just, hold on. What on, chat? What on, chat? I believe this was her 2017 outfit. 21. 21. Shout out to 21. It's, uh, I, 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 I enjoy some of your music. Uh, nevertheless, I, what I don't enjoy and what I've talked about before uh, on my shit is the feminization of men, right? 
and the indoctrination is large and they just don't give a shit how it is that they seek to do it, but they seek to destroy your masculinity. How are you on one side of the coin, a goddamn gangster? You're a gangster rapper, but then you get in a relationship with the one, wrong one and she has you walking around with a I'm a ho too? As she walks around with Captain Say the Ho? Ah, uh, what is this shit? Here's the thing. Let me finish the story actually. So I go and I park the car and I'm going up in to the gun range, right? I wanted to go uh, practice my aim, so to speak. And as I'm walking up through the front door, right? Open up the front door, he's walking out. And I make eye contact with him. And I did like one of these. You know what I'm saying? I've talked about him in the past. I got 300 million views on my channel. Some of these famous people have seen my shit. I just don't know which was, baby. You understand what I'm saying? When I tell you 21, <laughs> 21 Savage looked at me with the, with the, I can't even reproduce it, but he looked angry at me. And as soon as he walked by me, I went to the young lady that I was with and I said, did it just look like 21 Savage just grilled me? And she was like, he don't like you. <laughs> like, so 21, it's just media, baby. I gotta be able to talk about you. This is some flugazi shit, 21. I, I, I am sorry if you've seen the content. Sure, you're a nice gentleman, but this is some bullshit. But we got to use you as an example of what can happen if you let the wrong one infect you. Hold up. Here's some more. Hold on. Hold on. God damn it. 21. 21. God damn it. Does he have on a rainbow show shirt? Damn it. 21. Let me see if there's any more that I can show. This is this is just my man. No, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna show any more. I've 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 absolutely had <laughs> had enough. But 21, you absolutely look like you're being held hostage, my G. It's like she got the the those double D uh, mammary glands and the viscous innards to to completely hold one out over on you, and I don't like it. You understand what I'm saying? Nevertheless, let me get this off of the screen. Uh, so. Anyway, I think he's seen my content. <laughs> so I've been back to that gun range many times after that, and I have yet to see him. Um, but nevertheless, I'm glad that he's working on the Second Amendment rights. Lego! Pigeon, like, do you know in Hollywood, if you are at the same restaurant as someone, they will put it on the news that you're together. You're not at the same table. You don't know them. They're with their family. You're with your family. And they'll say we're at the, ho the, the hotel or the restaurant at the same exact time. This is what they have done to me throughout the years, okay? So I get it. I understand this is why I'm doing this interview. I understand why he's like, she just f rappers or she just does this. And even my slut walk, I was really, really proud of it. I hate what it turned into. I hated the name slut walk. I hate it when girls, what? you know, which sounds very hypocritical, had to leave the slut walk dressed like that. Which oh was the whole God. point, like, don't touch me because I'm dressed like this, you know? Still respect me because I'm dressed like a slut. But then when they would leave, I'd be like, this is my responsibility. I brought them here, but now I don't want them to go get hurt. But what, that was the whole damn point of the slut walk. Where I'm not making it. I'm, I, are y'all, are y'all, y'all <laughs> listening to this shit? Where's my red goddamn flag? Hold on, it might need to come out for this. Hold on. Let me just get it. Did y'all are y'all listening to this bullshit? Hold on. I gotta I gotta run the, I gotta run that section back. She is wild. He's really, really proud of it. Interview. I understand why he's like, she just f rappers or she just does this. And even my slut walk, I was really, really proud of it. I hate what it turned into. I hated the name slut walk. I was really, really proud of it. I hated what it turned into. I hate the word slut walk. If that's not a confusing jutting of ideas <laughs> points in five seconds, then I don't know what is. What is you doing, baby? I hate it when girls, you know, which sounds very hypocritical, had to leave the slut walk dressed like that. Uh, wait a minute. So they would come to the slut walk dressed like sluts. You'd have your critics and detractors saying, hey, listen, baby, if they dress in like sluts, they will be treated like sluts. If you dress like a police officer, you get treated like a police officer. If you dress like 
an airplane pilot, you get treated like an airplane pilot. If you dress like you're in secret service, they going to treat you like you're in... So, let's all slut walk together and wear whatever you want. Come through just wearing the pasties on your nipple. Slut walk. We're going to take control of that word, even though you hated the name of it. But they come there for the theatrics, for the videos that you could put on your social media, your Instagram, your TikTok, or whatever. But then when they leave, reality hits because you're deluded enough to want to escape reality for your bullshit, liberal, woke, feminist, trying to take back something. What is wrong with you, baby? This is feeling more grif... Okay, let, let me just, let me just keep, let me just keep listening. Amber Rose want to be Candace Hoens. I rebuke it. I hate what it <laughs> turned into. I hated the name Slut Walk. I hate it when girls, you know, which sounds very hypocritical, had to leave the slut walk dressed like that. Wow. Which was the whole point. Like, don't touch me because I'm dressed like this. You know, still respect me because I'm dressed like a slut. But then when they would leave, I'd be like, this is my responsibility. I brought them here, but now I don't want them to go get hurt. But what, that was the whole damn point of the slut walk. Where I'm not making a change. There's nothing, I'm not making any change for any women right now. Because I really want them to go put on a blanket and walk home and go be safe and cover up. Hope you guys are enjoying this conversation. I'm interrupting only briefly to speak to you about something very important. That is so wild. That, that is so wild that <laughs> she just admitted that. Anyway, let's get the ad real quick. Uh, com slash Candice. It's actually, I actually want to talk about the slut walk. And that's yeah. a great place because we can actually talk about your history okay. and some of the judgment that was thrown at you. Let's go, and Candace. I do want to say this because I have tried to communicate this to people. Take it back, Candace. Just cannot understand why I have any sort of a semblance of a relationship with Tristan Tate and Andrew Tate, and they're very big. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I just get it. I think one of the things that happens a lot, and I, I always talk about Ali Stuckey, who's a pod, Christian podcaster. She's amazing. She's lovely. She's. I don't know who the Stuckey chick is, and maybe I'll look her up in a quick second. But I like what Candace is doing in order to maintain a relationship. Essentially, what Candace is doing is she, instead of combating Amber Rose and saying the slut walk was ridiculous, you were ridiculous for thinking that that was a good idea. What in the name of Ho, what were you trying to do? Instead of like saying all of that shit, what she's doing is, is that she's she's deflecting in a sense to start to talk about who is popularized for masculinity content, the exact opposite of what it is that Amber Rose was going to preach. So she's using this outside force of Tristan and Andrew Tate in order to try to prove a point. Candace is conversationally it very intelligent like that. Um, but I think that that's a good way in order to try to denounce what the hell that Amber Rose is saying while also not implicating herself in potentially losing somebody that can be a good podcast appearance in the future. Basically like what you want your daughter to be. Like mm -hmm. everything turned out right. She came from a stable family, two Christian parents. She like loves the Lord. And then you have someone like Andrew Tate and her and him maybe have said things about each other. But I always say to people with the way that my life was, mm -hmm. how my life started, I would have never listened to Ali Saki. Like, right. I would have never in a million years listened to an Ali Sucky podcast before I listened to an Andrew Tate podcast. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it, it wasn't, which is, I'm saying this quite ironically, it wasn't relatable. That's the name of her podcast. It wasn't relatable because I'm like, okay, you're a girl where I hope one day that I could raise kids like that, but I'm going to listen to someone who I just feel understands things like that I've lived through, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not easy to be guided down the right path or to end up at faith immediately. And that, I think that's why an entire generation of kids who didn't grow up with two parents in the home would rather listen to an Andrew Tate. And the conservative movement does not always yeah. understand that. And I think that that's not a good thing. And that's why I loved when I heard you just say what you believe, because I'm like, if that, I because I, I believed that you believed it. Right. And I'm like, great, now we invite her in and talk to her about where she's been and what made her wake up. Mm -hmm. So starting with the slut walk, because I was frantically against Allie the slut Beth walk. Stuckey. Talked about it many times in my old show. I'm gonna just- I know, I remember. Oh, I was like, <laughs> I was anti slut walk because I felt that women were being used to actually make things harder for women. So I'm gonna show you just it's like true. a cut here for the audience for a clip of just some slut walk footage. You're not in any of this footage, but I just so people know what it is. Okay. 
I'm a porn star. My name is Lily Cade. I'm here today because just because I am a slut doesn't mean you can rape me. I am who I am. If you don't like it, f you. Oh the my word God. slut should be reclaimed because sex is just something that's fun and something that's natural that we do. We're here to support women's rights and to choose what they want to do, and they're not asking for it just because they're dressing like this or however they choose to dress. Every time someone tried to call me a slut when I was younger, I was like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not a slut, I'm not a whore, I'm not all that. Finally, my 18th birthday comes around, so I'm like, f it, I can do what I want now. I don't have to say I'm not a slut. Dick or veg, don't care. So when you see that, and I will, granted, look, end of it's funny-ish. It is funny. Yeah. Um, how does it make you feel? Good question. Um, a part of it I am not proud of. Another part of it I, I, I agree with. And the part that I do agree with is that there are a lot of girls in high school or college, right, young girls, that <laughs> are literally called derogatory names for no reason at all. They're not even doing anything. I was one of those girls. I was a late bloomer. My, my kids are 11 and 4. I have friends that have, like, 25-year-olds. So... You know, I, I do think that sometimes that is a, an issue where you... I think it's odd that she called out late bloomer and then is also calling out that she was called a slut. Usually, if you were an early bloomer, uh, maybe she just misspoke right there. If you're an early bloomer, you gain, uh, I guess, breast early off in life. And, you know, women, you know, their version of violence is reputation destruction. So, like, I argue... They're doing these slut walks and shit like that all for the idea of, you know, taking back something from men. But women call women sluts way more than men call women sluts in order to hurt, hurt them. So it, it's almost like it's ill-directed. Bully girls because you're insecure or maybe she might like another boy or something like that. So that was one piece in there, if I'm not mistaken, where the girl said that. But then she said dick or badge or whatever. Mm -hmm. Who cares or something like that. Um, that's the only thing I still do agree with, but the other stuff I just, and you know what, Candace too, listen, when it comes to sex workers, I'm still for sex workers. And when I say that, I mean that I understand it's not easy to just say, stop, don't do this anymore. You're better than this, right? We can all say that at, all day, but there has to be a solution for why they should stop, you know, or, um, maybe the money that they did make through sex work or the umbrella of sex work, like stripping and stuff was not actually sex. Um, and create businesses for themselves or something like that, you know? So I, I have empathy for women like that because I was, I was that girl. I never, my dreams and aspirations in life were not to be a dancer. Um, but I grew up poor and my mom had mental health issues and you know, we were homeless when I was really young and my neighborhood was drug dealers and strippers, you know? So um, that was my lifelong dream. And then when I became famous, everyone just pointed the finger at me and was like, you used to be a stripper. We, we remember you, you know? And, um, and then that made like the whole internet and stuff. And then I had to just live with that. And over I, time, I- uh, This is, to me, this is a bit of revisionist history, right? because she's just describing herself as a victim, mother of mental illness, in and out of poverty, that's all that she's sure, that's one thing. But baby girl, after you became famous, you took the slut shit with you. You kept doing it. You kept sleeping around with all of these rappers, right? Like this was a part, like you weren't a victim of that. You were an active participator in it. But you know, we can just re re revise the, <laughs> just revise the history, Embraced baby girl. Embraced it with my slut walk because it was the only way to survive. Embraced I was like it. in survival mode because initially I'm like, hey guys, I grew up poor and my, and they're like, shut up. You were a f stripper, shut up, you know? So I'm like, okay, well, no one cares why. So what else is there left for me to do? I have to just own it, which I think is what Cardi B does often. She, she has to own it and act like she, we all have to act like we love it. See, that's, so know. this is very interesting. So for those who were not introduced to Amber Rose before the RNC, Amber Rose was introduced to the world because you were dating Kanye West. Yes, and it 15 was years ago. 15 years ago, yeah. and it became this big thing. Kanye West is, is dating a stripper, and suddenly you became famous, like basically overnight. Yeah. Um, and I Well, he didn't know that I was a stripper at all. 
Oh, when he met really? me. I didn't know this. So okay. the misconception is that he met me at the strip club. I thought that my whole life until right no. now. No, <laughs> okay. he never met me at the strip club. I was actually a model. I was signed with Ford Models. I got booked what? for a music video called RoboCop on 808 and Heartbreak. Okay. Although that album is not about me. The, the My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is about me. Um, that's also another misconception. That's about his ex fiance. So. Yo, was she a model? Was she a Ford model and was stripping at the same time? Did she get the booking to meet Kanye from Ford Modeling Agency? Ford Models. Um. Um, original, hold on. I want to bring this up on this just so I am not tripping. Hold on. Let me bring this up on the screen. Um, Ford models, uh, originally Ford modeling agency is an American international modeling agency based in New York city. It was established in 1946 by Eileen Ford and her husband, Jer Jared Ford. Okay. So there's, okay. Interesting. I wonder if she was stripping at the same time that she was doing a shout out to Lewis. It's the same old trope of living with plausible deniability. They are indiscriminate women, their logic. Why be accountable when you can be a hoe? That's a smart brother right there. Shout out to Lewis. I got booked for a job and then we fell in love and we were together for like two years. And um, it was a good time and it was a great time in pop culture. And we really did have a lot of fun for a long time. But um, yes, he did not meet me in the strip club. So when me and him started to get to know each other, I was like, hey, I, you know, I just want to be honest because I could tell that we have feelings for each other. I am actually a dancer back in the Bronx. I lived in the Bronx at the time. Funny, me and Cardi worked at the same spot, just different times because I'm older than her. Interesting. Oh. And, um, and uh, he was like, I don't care. I just want to be with you. I don't even care that you were a dancer. That doesn't even bother me. Uh, yeah. You know, and um, he was really great about it. He just really didn't care because I felt like he just knew my heart. He, he knew who I was as a person. Um, so, yeah. So go ahead. But that's that's, that's how I'm it all so started. I'm so glad you clarified that. And yeah. so you, which is really funny because you got branded as a stripper. When he met you, you weren't even stripping. But they, I guess. I was stripping, but he didn't know that I was a stripper. He didn't know you were a stripper. So I was a model, but mm -hmm. I wasn't a Bella Hadid. I wasn't a famous model. I just happened to be signed to a big agency. But, but wasn't I wasn't getting a lot of work like that. So I still had to dance and money back to my mom in Philly, mm -hmm. you know, my family. So, so that's why I was still dancing in the Bronx. But he didn't meet me there. He met me because I booked uh, his music video. Got it. Okay, right. so this is literally a case of just, I guess, misconceptions in the media. No, just I... people pulling stories out of their ass and throwing it on the internet, and then everyone believes it. I think people can be really, I don't know, I guess, unforgiving of circumstances they can never imagine themselves to be in. So you kind of hear this when they find out, like, in someone's history, like, this person sold drugs, or, mm -hmm. you know, this person was a stripper, or did anything that was, to them, obviously we, we look at these things and we're like, this is not a good career to go into, but they don't understand what it means right. when your back is against the wall and what you would do. And it's unfortunate that the sex industry is fast money for people that need for it sure. and don't come from these circumstances. It's very yeah. unfortunate. And I'm glad you actually brought up Cardi B because so much in the media has made it seem like I am an enemy of Cardi B. And I feel like I'm actually the only person that ever believed in Cardi B mm -hmm. and uh, who truly believed in her, meaning that she could break out of this stripper stereotype. So I was introduced to her because my cousin like made me watch Love and Hip Hop and she was a star. There's no question about Absolutely. it. I had never watched Love and Hip Hop in my life, her and Ray J. I just thought they were both like yeah, very sure. entertaining yes. in this way. And what was so enjoyable about her was she was very self-deprecating. She was just like, I want to work hard and I'm going to make it and I believe in myself. But she would kind of, you know, point to the things that weren't right about herself in the same way and that it was very endearing. Mm -hmm. And then she kind of makes it when everyone's telling her she's not going to and she m makes some music and I can't remember what her first, was it Bodak Yellow that went viral yeah, yeah. for the first time? Yeah. And Cardi suddenly an she's talent. in Hollywood and she's got tons of followers because people liked her personality. Yeah. But then I felt like, okay, now she's gonna move on from the stripper stereotype, she doesn't have to be that anymore. Mm -hmm. Like her, her music is boppy, the people love her not because she's a stripper and actually, what she I felt the deeper. industry did was they tried to turn her into like the ultimate stripper. They were like, no, you're you're still, you have to be the stripper. No, babe, it's not her fault. They, they don't let you. They what don't do you let you fault? move forward. I think this is what? why, like, I'm 40 now. And this is why I don't give a f anymore. Like, I don't care. I'm going to speak at the RNC. I'm going to speak at my, um, on my Instagram. I'm going to say how I feel about things. And um, I'm not going to hold back anymore. 
because the industry does do that to women, especially women that come from nothing, like somebody like me and Cardi B. Um, they intimidate you with the fact that you'll eventually be back there with nothing. And that's how it's been for the 15 years that I've been famous. And so it's like... You, you know what she's actually trying to say? And I really hope that Candace subtly... No, I think she needs to actively call this out. What she's essentially saying is she's, again, removing accountability for the choice and decision that these artists as well as their teams make in lieu of the bag. She's describing, she's describing Cardi through herself that they chose a path of pedestalizing debauchery, nakedness, feminism in order to be in line what's within mainstream because that's more aligned to the advertise. It's more aligned to the capital. It is a choice. It is a choice to be in the sex industry. It is, it is most, 99% of the time you are not forced. It is a choice. It is damaging to, that we continue to allow this rhetoric to persist as if we do not have our own agency in what it is that we seek to do with our likeness and our image. It can be very easy to become a puppet, but you also have self-accountability. Damn. And um, I'm not going to hold back anymore because the industry does do that to women, especially women that come from. By the way, she confirmed it. She was a stripper up until Kanye saved her. Nothing like somebody like as me a and Cardi Ford B. model. Um, they intimidate you with the fact that you'll eventually be back there with nothing. And that's how it's been for the 15 years that I've been famous. And so it's like. You have to do this. You have to twerk on Instagram. You have to go viral. You know, um, it, it, the more followers you get, the more endorsement deals you get, which in turn gives you more money to support your family. Who specifically is 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 giving you that directive? There, it's everyone. It's everyone out there because it became a, a, a culture. So now, and again, I don't know Cardi personally, but I'm just looking from the outside in because I, I lived it already. I think that her team is probably saying, look at this other female rapper. Look what she's doing. Oh, she just went viral doing that. So now you got to do something, you know, raise the bar and do something else. Yeah, but so she's saying it right here. It's the team. It's the people around her, right, it, it, that are commanding, that are pulling the puppet strings because they want more capital and they know what's going to get more capital. Well, all money is not good money. All money is not good money. All money is not good money. Damn. Hit on the like button, y'all. Hit on the like button. Show respect in this chat room. Don't play with me. Let's go. And so it becomes an intimidation tactic where you feel anxiety that, like, it may be over for you in, in a second. And so even when me and Kanye broke up, I'll never forget it. I mean, obviously, so many years ago. But they were like, your 15 minutes is up. It's over for you. It's done. You're never going to work in Hollywood again. This is like the internet and just people. Um, yeah, because she doesn't have a talent. I couldn't get a, I couldn't get a publicist. I couldn't, nobody wanted oh, to work with me. Her. Um, and I was like, maybe they're right. But I just persevered and I managed myself for a few years. And I just, I did it by myself. And that first year, uh, I made my first million dollars in 2011. Um, by myself, dollars. you know? And so, okay. but even Thanks. then, you go this way a little bit and you're happy and you're just like, oh, I'm finally getting out of this bullshit. And then it's like, hey, do you want, I don't know, a million dollars to sign up to OnlyFans? There's a pandemic, everyone might die. You know, you're, you, you can't really work and travel anywhere unless you want to get a vaccine, so. Really the question is, how much money do you need to be happy? See, the thing is, is like, I can understand people that come from um, tortured backgrounds and they're like, you know, you take the red pill or the blue pill, essentially, right? You take the, you take the blue pill and you become a multimillionaire. You take the red pill and, you know, back to the life of normal, back to the life of average. But I think one of the things that I tried to push on this channel is, is that there is nothing wrong with average. I mean, my goal in life was to be above average, but People can live a happy life very averagely, but instead they get attracted to the billboard signs. They get attracted to the materialism. They get attracted. There's ads everywhere. As soon as you walk out of your house or your building, you're probably going to see an ad in the, in the next 30 seconds, 
right? Whether it's not you looking down at your mobile phone and you scrolling on Instagram or you walk by the bus stop and there's a damn placard on the chair at the bus stop. And in the West, we get so addicted to it. That's part of the reason why the views go so crazy when I do content where it's like a chick talking about Cheesecake Factory is not enough because the it's infused that nothing's enough. But I can tell you guys, even when you become rich, wealthy, multimillionaire, if your soul is not healed, you will not be happy. You will not be happy. You must understand that. You must take who you are and lead that forward. Don't be made up for those around you. I Listen, there's no way I'd have a platform now if this wasn't my actual thoughts and the way I think about something. There's no way I could do this day in and day out multiple times that they post this shit unless this shit is not actually me or the way that I think about things. A lot of these people are liars. They are liars for money. I can't just agree with the bullshit for agreeing with the bullshit. Questions, comments, concerns. Y'all already know what to do. Me, Uncle Torres, and Reviews at gmail.com. Until next time, all right? Peace. You don't want to see me get vexed. Marks on your phone, tell them, man, you can't jet. The big girl, the ones who can't stretch. Breaking the neck when we in the car next. You don't want to see me get vexed. Marks on your phone, tell them, man, you can't jet. The big girl, the ones who can't stretch. Breaking the neck when we in the car next. Dead bars, need a fibrillation ASAP. Get boxed with a straight gap. I'm reminded of my state, they like.